in a world where losing in your fantasy football league isn't an option, we present to you Triple Coverage Podcast. Hey, YouTubers. If you like what you see, make sure you click subscribe below. Today, we're going to do our tight end rankings for the 2018 redraft season. So sit back, crack a cold one, and enjoy. Podcast boys and girls, uh, we're getting into one of our favorite subjects, one of the fantasy football's deepest, darkest secrets. Tight ends. <laughs> tight. Whose yes. favorite? Yours. Oh, I isn't that you? That. Love tight ends, I thought, Jay. I love tight ends too. I yeah. Outside, uh, outside the top three. Unsung here. That's why. Outside the top three, is the best. That's why I got into a tight end premium league because now they're relevant. More, a lot more guys are relevant. Almost too relevant, I would say. <laughs> yeah, that's because you don't like change. Yeah, it takes a while. So, we're going to break down the uh, our rankings, uh, consensus, and maybe touch on where we had certain guys if we we're real far off. And it's really around centered around redraft this year. So, when you're in your redraft league, maybe uh, keep an eye out for some of these guys for some, uh, some good uh, value if you don't get the top guys. Yeah, if yeah, you don't get the top three guys, yeah, yeah, you just wait, just wait. It'll all, they'll all be the same after a while. Go ahead. Really? Yeah. All right. Number one, easy consensus for all of us. Rob Gronkowski. Uh, Gon- Jeez, somebody want to help me here? Gronkowski. No. Thank you. No, no, let him do it. Go, 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 go. He'll get there. Uh, okay. So actually, the top three we're all in consensus on: Gronkowski at one, Travis Kelsey at two, and Zach Ertz at three. Do you guys have anything you want to throw in about these guys? Is anybody concerned with the only one I have is Zach, uh, actually Kelsey and Ertz. Uh, Kelsey, now you throw in Sammy Watkins. Does anyone think that Travis Kelsey is not going to still be the number one target there? They changed quarterbacks as well, and now you have Mahomes. That's what I'm saying. So you add an elite talent, I guess, receiver. You have Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins with a guy that actually throws the ball downfield or has the arm strength to do so, whereas the last... X amount of seasons with Alex Smith, a lot of it was like arm strength. Like he's accurate, but he loves to throw to tight ends and like short balls and very rarely threw to the outside receivers. Now you add Sammy Watkins and a different quarterback. Anybody concerned at all that Travis Kelsey takes a li- just even a little hit and like maybe falls out of the top, you know, three or four like he has been? No, I'm not concerned just because of how, I mean, how athletic he is. Like he's going to, he maybe he drops in his numbers. Uh, you right, know, targets like, and everything. Else he's also. not going to drop in the tight end okay. finish. That tight end ain't dropping. Uh, it's going to be top three or four for sure. Okay. Um, I, I do think he might take a little bit of a, a hit because now they have more viable options than they've had right. in a while. With in a like different quarterback. Position. Yeah. That, that's the one question mark for me is the quarterback. So um, will he be as efficient as Alex Smith was? Right. And uh, we don't know that. Zach Ertz obviously drafted da- uh, Dallas Goddard there. Uh, but like Jay was saying previously, they didn't really use two tight ends as much as far as throwing to both those when Trey Burton was there, uh, unless Zach Ertz was hurt uh, or missed a couple of games. So I don't think Zach Ertz, uh, you know, touches that. I mean, now he's got Carson Wentz. He's going to come back healthy, hopefully, and I think he should be right there in the top three. So, yeah. Uh, I think... Um, Only concern there, I think I guess. if you look into that a little bit more, uh, magnify that a little bit, I think they didn't do it early in the season as far as Philadelphia using two tight ends. Uh, and I think... I would be a little wary of them using some more two tight end stuff uh, this season. I think they they evolve yeah. out there in Philly, so they're 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 not afraid to make changes. If it works, they'll use it. So um, I'm not high on Goddard by any means, and I think Ertz is the guy for sure. Um, but I would keep an eye out for for some of that. I think that's why he's kind of at three for me. I might have put him at two. Yeah. Um, but Gronk to me is clear number one. I think he's going to beast this year. As, as long as he's healthy and committed to a team, I think Gronkowski is going to be number one every year in my book. 
as long as he's, he's coming in season healthy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Outside the top three. Hit All right. This is where things start to, start to vary a little bit. But Greg Olsen was pretty much the uh, consensus number four easily. Mm-hmm. Um, if he's healthy as well, mm-hmm. Cam Newton, one of his favorite targets, and super consistent. Touchdowns, yards, receptions. He, he does quite a bit in Carolina. Anything yeah. you guys want to... I agree. I, I had these guys flip-flop with the number five guy, which is Kyle Rudolph. Um, I have Olsen at five and Rudolph at four. And the only reason that we have him coming in right after with Rudolph is uh, Kirk Cousins, who obviously we've seen in the past likes to throw their tight end a lot. Yeah. Um, I think that Rudolph gets a little bit of a bump from what he did last year. And I think he was a top 12 tight end last year as well. So, number eight, yes. Yeah, so I just think he gets a little bit bump up um, with Cousins coming to town. See, my, my only, I, like, I kind of agree that that passing game might, uh, as a whole, kind of take a little bit of a step up because I think Cousin is a better option. But I, uh, in Washington, you, when you had Jordan Green healthy, like that guy was a top tight end uh, very easily. And they didn't have a whole lot going on at the receiver position. Mm-hmm. So I think he's got better weapons than he's ever had. So I don't know... How much of a bump? I definitely think he's probably, you know, top five, top six. I, I could see your argument definitely uh, for Kyle Rudolph. I think he's going to be a, a good option this year. See, he, he the second half of the season last season was where he kind of turned it up. He had nine points and he had 11, 22, 13 and a half, 13. And then your 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 playoff week, though, is where he just kind of, he kind of got you. He had nine points, which was good. But then his week 16, he had one point. Week 17, one point if he did go to the end of the season. So, he had a streak of four consecutive games where he caught at least one touchdown pass, and you were rolling through. I mean, if you're if you can get that kind of production from your tight end, getting 13 to 22 points, which he did four weeks in a row, uh, you were definitely winning your fantasy league at the end of the uh, season until uh, playoff time came. Back. Yeah, he uh, he's definitely one of those guys that he's part part of the 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 reason you got into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But then for he's sure. one that turns around and he lays an egg on you. But and part of it right. is because the, <coughs> the team the team didn't have a lot to play for at the end of the year. So correct. You gotta be careful of those. You maybe played a quarter and then didn't see him again or something. See, those guys, although it would be hard to do, would be a great situation too. Knowing if your team is kind of in that position, try and trade him for a, a better. I was gonna say, option. or or go out and get a tight end that's on a, a, a lesser team that's not really playing for anything, but you know he's gonna be fantasy relevant because yeah. you know all they're gonna do is be passing the ball. That's, uh, a, that's, that's a, another that's, option. That's a tough one to really sack up and make that move for because sure. he got you into the playoffs. One hundred percent. Well, it's also an option once you get past the first few handful of guys in this tight end position that it gets to a point where you might want to just stream, uh, stream a tight end. Sometimes uh, you yeah. look at you redraft leagues and they stream quarterbacks. Like you wait just long enough to where you're streaming just based on who they're playing each week. And tight end, in my opinion, is the same type of position you're in if you don't get. Gronkowski, Kelsey, Ertz, and Ex- maybe Olsen. Explain what uh, what streaming is. Streaming is you look at and you don't get the top four guys. Like those That's guys how I get just, all my music. Me too. Right? You, just get the, you don't get one of those top four guys we just talked about. So now you're looking in the range of maybe having somebody like a, a Jimmy Graham or an Eric Ebron or a Jordan Reed or George, uh, George Kittle. You, you just kind of play the, you kind of play the, um, the, matchups. the matchups. You basically go for guys that are a week against a tight end. Uh, I think last year the Giants were really bad against tight ends, and so were the Raiders. So if you have two teams that just can't stop the tight end, you kind of go each week on your waiver wire, even if it's not a big name, and you pick up that guy for that week, and you, you spend your money or your fab money or whatever on that guy, you play him for that week, you turn around, you drop him back to waivers a week after. You Explain keep... what fab money is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> fab money, free agent acquisition budget. Explain what a week is? I'm yeah. Not, not <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree. I think a big – I don't want to hold – a bunch of tight ends to play matchups. If I'm doing the yeah. streaming game, I definitely want to maybe look a week One. <laughs> ahead yeah. or so and grab that guy for free. Hopefully, if I don't have to spend any, if you got a, a zero is your minimum uh, bid, you don't have to bid any. That's a good good strategy, actually, that you just mentioned, is is not wait until Saturday morning right. to try to go out and get the guy that's, that's bad against, because the chances are the other 11 teams that are in your league, somebody else is doing the same thing. So right. they might already pick them up. If you do look one week or maybe even two weeks in advance, you don't want to hold too many like you just said, but if you just look one week in advance and that Saturday for week six is coming up, you're looking at week seven. Like, okay, I got my guy for week six. It's Charles Clay who's going to play the Raiders. Okay, now we look to see week seven. As soon as that game ends on Sunday and Charles Clay is done and you're able to drop him, you drop him, you pick up that next guy, and you do it in one week out. Not Don't wait until the last day because then you're going to have to say you have be to gone. spend money for him or he'll be gone. Right. Uh, yeah, this is just a little side squirrel we're doing here. It's, it's very good strategy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to continue with that, uh, if you're if you're doing the streaming, uh, commit to it. Uh, yeah. You're gonna pick your guy that you're gonna roll with that week, and you roll with him. 
whether he does great or he doesn't do what good at all because it's going to happen. You're going to have to ride the wave mm -hmm. with streaming. And you just you make your decision, you run with it, you roll with it, you stick forget it. about it. Stick don't, with it. Don't be like, oh my God, I can't stream anymore because the guy laid an eight for you because that's, that's going to happen. And if you're lucky enough to hit some gold on the waiver wire with a guy, you might find a guy that you can just plug in for the rest yeah. of the year. Ricky so, Seals Jones or something like that that happened last you year. You never know. The right situation, mm -hmm. someone gets hurt, and now all of a sudden he's the guy getting a lot of targets. So you just you, you got to commit. That's, that's my only thing. I agree. So now let's go. Uh, that's the top five, obviously, we talked about with Rudolph and Ernie on the top five. So moving on to number six, um, consensus was Delaney Walker. Mr. Consistent. Highest on him was James. At, yeah. Him, well, just a spot above. At I'm a five, five, right? Yeah. Jay, you had him right there at uh, six. He finished and, uh, number four last season. Mm -hmm. I was uh, lowest on him at eight, but uh, everybody's got him in the top eight, so it's not like... Uh, I'm not worried about Johnny Smith yet there, uh, taking uh, anything away from Delaney Walker, so that's yeah, why I kind of have him uh, there with a the new offense and uh, kind of hoping that they run more plays and maybe kind of spread the ball and let... Uh, uh, Mariota do what he did in uh, college at Oregon. Maybe they let it uh, they'll open up the playbook just a little bit for him and speed things up. And I think Delaney Walker will get the same amount of targets or more. Like I said, last season he finished number four, so I could easily see him finishing in the top five again. Yeah, see, I, I got him starting to start to slide a little bit. Um, I think he's definitely going to be very relevant. Like you said, well, he's, he's a top eight tight end. He's going to be decent for you on your team, but I think he does start to take. You feel game. comfortable playing him every week, though? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. After Delaney Walker, number seven. Evan, Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram had a gigantic year last season as a rookie year. Jay was the lowest on him at number nine. Me and Travis had him at five and six, respectively. Mm -hmm. And why the drop-off, Jay? Because the injuries and the players coming back now for the Giants? Or I just feel like he was pushed into that role last year. They had really no viable targets. Once Sterling Shepard went down, Odell Beckham was lost for the year. They had guys off their practice squad playing wide receiver. Um, he was really pushed into that role. And... Even though he did do well last year, he had a lot of drops, and that was common for rookie tight ends. So if you look at Evan Ingram with the healthy Giants team coming back, you have, you add Saquon Barkley to that, who's going to obviously get some pass catches. And then you have Odell Beckham coming back healthy. You have Sterling Shepard healthy. And then you turn around and add Evan Ingram to the mix. I think he's going to do well, but I don't think you're going to see a top five production out of him. This is crazy. On, on um, We're on MyFantasyLeague.com, which is where we use a lot of our – actually almost all of our leagues Dynasty, now. Yeah. Dynasty, Redraft, you can use it for everything. It actually has him, his projected stats to get better. Has him finishing, last season he had 64 catches. 64 catches on 115 targets. They have him getting 137 targets this next year. 77 catches, 800 yards, 6 touchdowns. I just that don't puts see how that at, happens. That puts him as tight end, that top 3 tight end easily. I don't see how that happens. I think the talent is there. I just don't think there's, there's too many mouths to feed. And with Odell Beckham coming back, he's clear cut number one as far as the options go. Uh, it's not going to be number two over Sterling Shepard. Evan Ingram. No, I think that they're going to try to use Barkley as the number two. I think Barkley's going to be the number two option. I think they need to. No, they got to slow down on Barkley. You can't. You're not going to give Barkley 400 and something or five, 450 touches uh, his, his rookie season. I don't think. I don't think they want to run him into the dirt right away. Do you? You do, obviously, yeah. I, I don't think they're going to run him into the players, <laughs> but I, I think they're going to use him a yes, lot. No, yeah, uh, I, I agree that they're going to use him a lot as well. Uh, for me, uh, the story that is told is Odell comes back, that helps Ingram. Uh, you yeah. got a great running game, that helps Ingram. you got uh, Shepard who will be healthy, I think that helps because now all that coverage, uh, you always like to talk about the number one corner and this and that or the other. I, he's going to be he, everywhere but him. He's wide open down the seam yep. on a lot of plays. So I think this helps Eli have a, a good. I think I think they're primed for a huge bounce back, considering what I mean, they did last year. Eli threw the ball just him because uh, obviously he got benched that one game and whatever. So, but just him. They together as a team they had 600 passing attempts, which is like I I don't know if it for sure led the league, but it was definitely in the top three of passing attempts. So I don't see that slowing down at all. I know their defense is like just okay, and now they added all these pieces. But if you tell me that you take 50 throws away and let's say it throws 550 times. I mean, there's going to be plenty of targets to go around, but Evan Ingram, I feel very comfortable starting him in my lineup. I think Jay would too, even though he's on number nine. It's not like you're saying that you oh, wouldn't yeah. play him, right? No, so, he's still, I mean, yeah. anybody in the top 12, you're playing. I'm happy with playing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, after Evan Ingram, who we got? We uh, have uh, Trey Burton. Yeah. A little, uh, little newcomer to the scene kind of this year. Kind of came on at the end of the year when uh, Zach Ertz uh, got hurt in Philadelphia, and then he got traded away over there to. Uh, Anybody in, uh, Chicago. anybody here think that the hype train's getting a little little much? Uh, not Travis. He has him at number seven. So do you want to explain why I'm so high? I have a nine, Jasmine at ten. So. We all got him in the top ten. No, go ahead. You explain. 
Oh yeah, no, I, uh, <laughs> I, I I like it. He was able to. He's he's formerly a wide receiver, so he you know he's gonna catch passes. You know he's not coming up there to block. You got uh, Nagy uh, coming from Kansas City, mm-hmm. and you know the whole Philadelphia Peterson. They've all come from the same tree, and they've all used the tight end Kelsey Ertz. Uh, and I think Burton walks right in, and he's basically the top tight end there. So I think they're gonna get him involved. Um, at first, I was very hesitant and wasn't necessarily buying in um, and I honestly don't think the hype trains getting out of control because I think a lot of people are like whoa 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 I think more people are apprehensive about Burton than buying in I, I don't feel like I've known as many people to just be buying in on Burton uh, as like oh Burton I don't want Burton I don't want to trade for but like he's going into his fifth season right now last season let's say 2015 he had four targets 2016 he had 60 targets Last season, he had 31 targets only, but he had five touchdowns. And I think that's why mm-hmm. everyone kind of, like you said, he burst on the scene when Ertz was out there. He caught a couple touchdown passes. But his projection is to get only 43 catches, and that's with his targets doubling to 65. So 43 catches, 475 yards, and they have him projected at seven touchdowns, which I think is, is kind of a lot. Because you have Allen Robinson in there. you got Taylor Gabriel there. And then you have Burton. You also have Shaheen. They throw to the running backs and, and Cohen a lot. They throw to Jordan Howard, even though he can't catch much. No, I'm not concerned about Gabriel. I'm not concerned mm. about Shaheen. So you put um, him in number you got a ro- I think rookie there. Three. I think the type of routes that he may be running is going to fit Trubisky very well. Trubisky's not going to air it out down the thing. He's going to hit some of those intermediate, shorter routes, and I think I think he's going to benefit from that. I think, I think he could outperform those projections. I just disagree with the hype isn't out of control because I think it is out of control. Mm-hmm. Uh, to go from a guy that played in, I think, three full games last year to now all of a sudden we're going to crown him as a top 10 tight end, yeah. to me, that's that's kind of outrageous. He finished number 27 is last season. Is it outrageous season. considering after the top three or whatever tight ends, we always say it's just pretty much mm-hmm. everybody's together? Like It's not yeah. that outrageous to really to throw point. a guy into to whatever echelon. I think it's the, for me, it's the opportunity I, I feel like he's going to have up there. And, and the usage that I think he will kind of get up there. So, All right, well, time will tell. Uh, let's go to the next guy here, Jimmy Graham. We have consensus number nine. Uh, James and I both have him at number eight, and you have him at number 11, Travis, which is still a tight end one. I thought, honestly, that I was going to be the lowest on him at eight just because Jimmy Graham had such a good season last season. He finished as a tight end number seven, uh, and that's with missing week 14. And week 15, he had, I think, one target. So he could easily finish as a top five right there if, you, if he would have played those games. And now he goes to Green Bay with everyone sees, oh, it's Aaron Rodgers. You're in Green Bay. It's a high-powered offense. You lose Jordy Nelson there. Didn't really add much except for rookies. So you would think that everyone would be very high on Jimmy Graham. Obviously, you know my stance on it. I'm, I'm very low on Jimmy Graham. So I, I don't know. I thought 8 was kind of low on him. So Travis has him at 11. Is it more because of where he landed with Aaron Rodgers? Like, you think he's going to regress like from I, 7 to 11? I feel like there's a little bit of a hype train uh, with Jimmy Graham. Um, I stopped it. I, I feel it's very, very touchdown dependent for me. That's, and I feel the same way. Like he's not going to get a lot of yards and he hasn't even, he's not that Jimmy Graham anymore. He got used in Seattle uh, because they were a mess. They couldn't mm. do anything up there either. They couldn't run the ball, they can do anything. We know Aaron Rodgers spreads the ball around. Uh, uh, I think you're shooting the needle and hoping that he is the red zone target um, in, in Green Bay because he, I don't feel like he's going to get a whole lot of yardage, a whole lot of receptions. And I think you're you're really hoping for touchdowns, and I think he's going to be okay for you. And as far as tight end tight ends go, you don't need a whole lot from your tight end for him to be relevant for you on your team, and to finish in the top twelve. And I think he will be able to get a few of those touchdowns. But he went from 95 targets in 2016. He also had 95 targets exactly in 2017. They haven't projected to get 96 targets in Green Bay. So, but you have Russell, he's going from Russell Wilson to, to Aaron Rodgers. It's not like he's going from, you know, a bottom feeder quarterback type to Aaron Rodgers where it's going to get this gigantic bump up, in my opinion. Like he had Russell Wilson and Russell Wilson used him pretty well. Uh, and in there, he had six touchdowns in, in 2016. He had 10 touchdowns in 2017. They have him right in the middle at getting eight touchdowns. And again, that's very dependent. If he only gets two or three touchdowns, then I could easily see him falling out of the top 10, like easily. Uh, if he maintains his touchdown ability, like a couple seasons, like one, two, three, yeah, four was, seasons, he's had double-digit touchdowns. That was New Orleans down there. True. We, we well, know, last season he had 10 in, in know, Seattle. Right, but what else was there really going on? You had like Baldwin, Baldwin and, Lockett. and Graham. Mm-hmm. Lockett, yeah. I don't know. You didn't really do it. No, Richard and Lockett didn't, were very streaky. So if Wilson had the kind of weapons that Aaron Rodgers has around Jimmy Graham, does Jimmy Graham do that in Seattle last year? Like if you got Devontae Adams, then you got you know a Cobb, you got relevant pieces. Like I still think he can do it. I just don't well, know. 
if you will. I think it's spurts. I think he's going to be Green Bay. See, I think it's where tight ends go to die. I have a hard time just writing him off because I do think he will be red zone a presence. Okay. Um, number ten, then round it out. Jack Doyle at number ten for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Travis has him at ten. Right at ten. Jay's twelve. I'm thirteen. We're all pretty close there. Anyone? Uh, Jack Doyle, matter of fact, finished. I think is like tight end five or four last season in our league. Let's see, tight end number five, and he missed a week. So uh, we all have him dropping because, because of Eric Ebron? Ebron, but we all, hmm. all three of us have Doyle ahead of Ebron in our rankings. Yeah, yeah. that hurt because I'm an Eric Ebron fan, and I think the talent's there. I just don't think that Detroit used him as well, as well as we could have. But you're talking, I mean, Doyle had 75 targets in 16, and then in 2017 he had 108 targets. Yeah, but you guys had him back-to-back, though, right? I did. Yeah, so did Jay. I just couldn't pull the trigger at putting Ebron one spot ahead of him. Just be, I think that Ebron's going to be more touchdowns, and I think that the PPR guy is going to be Doyle. I mean, he's projected to get 75 catches. He had 80 catches last season, so they actually have him regressing a little bit. And I mean, I, I think they're both going to be fantasy relevant if Andrew Luck comes like, in a season. Uh, Colts, season. Colts are going to be down every damn game, let's be honest. Their defense is just not good. And you have Andrew Luck's going to come out throwing the ball. And who is he going to throw to? T.Y. Hilton, and that's it. That's what I'm saying. So it's going to be, yeah, I think they're both going to have relevance um, and and run a lot of two tight end sets. That's why I have them so close in the rankings. I have Doyle right at the back end at the top 12, and I have uh, Eric Ebron at number 13. Okay. Uh, So after Jack Doyle, George Kittle. George Kittle. Now, this is where a huge disparity happened. I have Kittle at number 7. James, you have him at 10. Travis, 19. He barely made your top 24. Yeah, he did. Explain yourself. Um, please. Jimmy G, even though he had that uh, nice little stretch and they won five games, he didn't throw a lot of touchdowns. Uh, they had a lot of drives in with field goals. Um, Kittle isn't going to get a huge lion's share of like targets and catches. So I think it's very, I think the ceiling is, is low for Kittle. Based on what though? Like he likes to run to the tight end. So based on what is he not going to get a lot of, um, red zone targets or saying targets at all? Oh, I didn't say targets at all. I you say he wasn't going to get a lion's share of the targets. Yeah, I don't think he's going to. He's not the number one pass receiver there. I mean, Can you guys talk up shit? I, yeah, I, I, I feel like you're offended that I had him so low. Like I just 19 think, is kind of. 19 is very low. Like last season he had 63 targets. Okay. And, and Okay. As a rookie. Right. So I, you assume those targets are going to go up a little bit uh, because like they don't have much at the wide receiver, which Jay hates the wide receivers in San Francisco. You have Pierre Garçon and then a bunch of guys, really. I'm not a Kittle. I'm not a Kittle believer. Uh, I think he's going to be right around, you know, viable. I don't think he's going to be super consistent for you necessarily. So and Garoppolo the, took over the last five games, I guess, right? Uh, so week thirteen on, he had three targets, two, five, three, six. Right, and he not, was helped out by that big game at the end. That's without right? that's without Pierre Garcon as well. Right. So like, I just don't think he's going to be what everybody. I think it's partly due from the residual of. The Garoppolo hype. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that whole uh, offense kind of. Yeah, yeah. So him, McKinnon, everybody's Garoppolo. Gonna, everybody's getting a huge bump. So I just feel like, yeah, I think he'll be okay, uh, but he's not one of my favorites. You want to do a wall bet with him, Jay? Kittle versus who? Uh, just Kittle finishes the top twelve. Uh, yeah, split the difference. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll, I'll split the difference. You have him at nineteen. I have him at seven. Mm, seven. Yeah, I have him at seven. Damn, I have him at ten. I'll say he doesn't finish top seven. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, so you got to give up twelve spots. So you spots. don't want to do a. You don't want to do all. <laughs> oh, I do. I just I don't want to. You want to skew towards you? Much, um, right? No, for sure, because I'm used to you guys skewing it towards you. <laughs> doesn't work that way. <laughs> I let you think you got to skew towards you on the Corey Grant Yeldon one, but it not, definitely not on is. This one. No bet. No bet with Kittle. Let's see. You want you want to jump on that the Grant Yeldon train? Yeah, hundred percent. All right, jump on the side with him. Okay, uh, one thousand uh, percent. George Kittle, no bet. So number twelve is going to be Jordan Reed. That rounds out our tight end one. Uh, Jay had him at number eleven. Travis had him. He was the highest at number nine. And I'm not falling for Jordan Reed again. I have him at number seventeen. And it's not because of the talent. It's because of his injuries. And he's coming off another damn yeah. toe surgery. And I'm just done with. I'm done with the Tyler Eiferts and the Jordan Reeds of the league. And we always talk about tight ends getting hurt, but when it's the same guy getting hurt over and over and over again at season to season to season, like eventually I have to give up on him. And I'm not willing to take Jordan Reed as a, a tight end one when I know, or I, I don't feel comfortable starting him every week because I'm, I'm leery that he's going to get hurt at some point. 
I just don't know when that is. Is it going to be preseason? We won. He's the one guy that no matter where you put him in your rankings, he's the one guy that is athletic enough and talented enough that he could finish as a top five tight end. One thousand percent. If you played all sixteen games, one thousand percent, he could be a top six or seven tight end easily. I just don't have faith in him anymore to do that. If he does, I won't be surprised if he finishes in the top five. But I'm going to go on a limb and, and bank that he doesn't play more than ten to twelve games, even with the dump down king. I don't care who he's playing. Time. If he doesn't play a full season, I don't want the guy on my team or from where he's going. Like he's being drafted as a, a tight end one, and I don't think that he's going to finish as a tight end one by the uh, season end. Travis, do you have him? Are you ready to stamp his passport for playing a healthy um, after his toe surgery? Toes. Hey, anybody that starts the season healthy, I'll stamp. Uh, but revocation is he healthy though? Revocation right now? comes or, or at he, will. He is healthy. Is yes, that? he okay. had he had. Surgery on his toes. By all account. Um, so for me, I have him at nine, but I'm basing it off of he's, it's a healthy Jordan Reed. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's one of those guys that, you know, if this guy slips, like he does start to slip a lot now because nobody, everybody feels the same way. Mm-hmm. But you also have that little pocket of people like, look, if he makes it to this point, but I'm taking a shot. But he because, always gets drafted too high because there is that guy that's willing to take the risk of like, oh, how uh, Jordan Reed's still there, and the top like let's say five guys are there, and they're like, you know what? It's a ninth round, tenth round, eleventh round, that range, and then somebody ends up taking him a little early too high, every that's, single time. That's that's not too high. That that's I the, think it that's is. the t- that's the range where if you you clearly you should be building your roster at a decent uh, a rate when you get to that point. When there's those high upside picks, yes, they're risky, and if you're not a you know a risk taker, you're not going to do it. But that's, that's a guy that will help you win a league if he's healthy and he produces. He's the guy that's going to burn you in your league, I'm telling you guys. Yeah, like, that's, that's every risk, damn year. Risk, risk reward. He's so high if risk he's reward. If he's healthy and you get him in the 10th round, make me the case that he doesn't help In the 10th round? You. Okay, yes. He doesn't help in the 7th, 8th? Mm. Well, you just said 9, 10. Mm. Now you're going 7, 8. Yeah, because that's why I said if it's in the 9th or 10th, I'm happy with him. He's Somebody will reach on him and take him earlier than where he should be going is what I said. And so I said 8th, ninth, 10th round. I feel comfortable ninth and 10th if, if I'm owning him. If he's in the 7th or 8th round somebody's taking him, it's too early. It's way too early. There's way I too much talent out taking him that early. Okay, all right. Thing. I think it's been okay. multiple years where People have been burned. burned. Yeah. Some, like, half of your league has probably been burned. I've never point. even personally been burned by him. I'm not going to let that happen. I have him in a stupid You're tight end. better man than most. A brother. stupid okay. tight end premium league is what I have him in. Ooh. So, good luck. Um, so that burn my my life. is real. That my life. Real. Okay, so let's 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 roll through the rest of these guys. Yeah. Uh, tied at twelve, uh, with the same kind of consensus uh, score as David and Joku. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think everybody, you know, big, we're all big pretty game. similar on him. Yeah. It's very mitigated. Like we don't know what's going to happen there with uh, so many weapons. Who's going to be the quarterback for sure to start the season? But we all agree. I think he's athletic and has the talent that he could be a very decent option for you. Agree. I'm not putting him in the top ten necessarily or anything, but he's close. He's 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 moving up. Um, after that, at uh, coming at 14. 14 is Eric Ebron, Jack Doyle's buddy. I think it's up in the air for me as well. What goes on there in Indianapolis? I think they could use two tight ends, but I think it, yeah, I think they could actually line up Eric Ebron uh, on the outside sometimes and have Jack Doyle as a tight end and have Ebron line because he's gigantic. He's Wait, like a Jimmy what? Graham type, or he's big. And I think that well, who's our second receiver there? Ryan Grant. You think they'll line up Eric everywhere? Ebron I think they should. I think they should. What? I think they should use him all over. Take it easy. I know you like Eric Ebron, but come on. Okay, they drafted him in the first round for a reason. He obviously has a wide receiver like pedigree. He's like, yeah, he's like, he's like <laughs> Jimmy Graham. He's 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 a he's not a blocking tight end. He's not going to be used as a blocking tight. end. They brought him in to be a receiving tight end. However, they want to use him or line him up, they will use him. I guarantee it. Well, they didn't draft him, so I don't think any of that uh, means anything to Indianapolis. They paid him though, didn't they? All right. Yeah, okay. Number fifteen, Jared Cook. For the Oakland Raiders, we all were kind of close on him. 13, 15, 20, we had him ranked respectively. Uh, you know who else uh, I saw on this list I kind of want to talk about? Also tied at number 15 is Austin Severian Jenkins. I think that we it was weird. We all had him 16, 16, 16. We were very consistent in Austin Severian Jenkins. But I just I think that he could have a top 12 season. Any any of these guys in this range for sure. probably have a top 12 We season. actually have him bumped up from what he finished last year, which mm-hmm. was number 20 mm-hmm. overall in a PPR league. But he also missed three games last year. So... Again, that just that helps us with a, uh, the case of that he could be a top 12 guy. Uh, after Austin Aaron Jenkins, you have uh, 17, O.J. Howard, and Cameron Brait, both tied. Both Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, tied ends. I still think it's Cameron Brait's job as of now that I think he'll get more of the targets than O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard might get more touchdowns, but I love both these guys as uh, red zone targets. 
there was a huge difference in that though. Like we were all really close on OJ Howard, but as far as Cameron Bray goes, James, you had him at twelve. Yes, you I had him in your top twelve. Travis has him at twenty one. I still think that Cameron Bray is going to be a top uh, a tight end one. From all the guys that are there, I easily can see him out, uh, beating George Kittle, Jordan Reed, uh, and Joku, even even Jack Doyle. Like I, I I think that I don't know. I think all those guys in that little pocket area that he, I would not be shocked whatsoever if he still finished as number tight end number 10, 11, 12. I mean, where did he finish last season? He Cameron finished Ray? number 10. Number 10, okay. But I think that if he was there by himself, then I think he would have a, ch- a chance to finish in the top 12. The fact that O.J. Howard wasn't there by himself. He wasn't there by himself last year. O.J. Howard was a rookie. Pretty, pretty much, because O.J. Howard wasn't used a whole lot. Um, but right, but what I'm saying is, if Cameron Brait last season, right, finished as what we say, uh, what we say it was ten PPR league okay. number ten, number ten. Okay, so you take away a lot of his targets and and receptions and whatever. Like he's still gonna be in that right. Look at look, he had a, only had 142 points for tight ends. Like if you're a top ten wide receiver, you're talking like in the 240 range, 220 range. So I don't think that if he loses some targets and receptions or a couple of touchdowns, that he's just going to fall off the map and not be in the top 12. That's without Witten. That's Witten who beat him out. He's not going to be there anymore. Uh, that's without Hunter Henry. He's going to be there anymore. And he finished number 10. So you take those guys away, you know what I mean? That's two more extra spots that I think that he will have a chance to get into that top 12. I don't know. I mean, that's assuming they don't change O.J. Howard's kind of role and involvement. But why would you do that, though, if it's, you know what I mean? Like, the guy's producing very, very well for you. Yeah, but they dra- they drafted OJ Howard to come in and kind of be okay a uh, part of that offense. He no, definitely wasn't he definitely wasn't brought into block because he did not do that at mm-hmm. Alabama whatsoever. He also didn't catch very much at Alabama, but right, he didn't do anything. He's, he's big. supposed to be a great tight end. Um, Supposedly, uh, <laughs> I'll so wait. I think the thing with this one is whoever gets hurt or if somebody goes down with injury, that other guy is very very viable. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, okay, let's round them out. Uh, number number 19, nineteen, Tyler Eifert. Uh, Mr. Injury himself, we were all pretty similar. 20, 21, and 18, we had him, so he's number 19. Also tied with him is Charles Clay. Uh, again, we were pretty consistent on Charles Clay as well. Uh, 21 was Ricky Seals-Jones. Uh, he could have a, a lot better year, in my opinion, than number 21, but I have to see it for an entire season with the, the quarterback situation that's there. You have Bradford and Rosen. They're both new to the team, so I don't know what they're going to do, how often they're going to use that tight end. Uh, 22 is Ben Watson, who's on the Saints now. Travis is super high on him. Had him as number tight end 14. Jay was 26. I was 21. Anything you want to say about Benjamin Watson or not? Uh, he he's a good veteran, and Drew Brees will use him, and he will he'll have a floor. His floor will be good. His ceiling may not be through the through the roof. The ceiling it's not through the roof, bro. Correct. But his floor will be good, I think. Okay. 23, Vance McDonald. Uh, we all had him right the same. 22, 23, and 24. And 24th uh, tight end, Austin Hooper. Uh, again, very consistent with us. J23, I had him at 24. Travis, I had him at 24. So uh, that rounds out the top 24 tight ends. Anything after that or any other guys that you might want to put a watch on from the list that's there uh, that you think might squeeze into the being fantasy relevant tight end-wise? One guy I would like to mention that's not in my top 24 but it could definitely be fantasy relevant is... Um, Don't say Blake Jarwin. No, it's Tyler, Tyler Croft. I agree. I uh, think he takes over Eifert. He's a guy last year that I wasn't 100% sure the Bengals were going to bring back Eifert, and they signed him to a one-year deal, but he's another guy that's kind of like Jordan Reed, that he was very good in college at Notre Dame, and you thought he was going to kind of transfer that over to the NFL, but he's a guy who just can't stay on the field. Like I feel like every single season he's got some kind of injury. Is it just bad luck, or is it conditioning? I mean, we'll, we'll wait and see on that, but if he misses any kind of time at all, Tyler Croft is somebody that could be like a top 15 tight end. Yeah, I picked up Tyler Croft off the waivers in Dynasty, and uh, I'm stashing him for now. But yeah. I'm waiting. I think there's a few guys that are in, – there's injury concerns around a few guys that maybe they can be a little more relevant. Uh, Vernon Davis is one, and Jordan Reed isn't uh, completely healthy and ready to go. I like Vernon Davis. I yep. would put him definitely up in my uh, top 24. Um, the Cowboys tight end situation, if that shakes out a little bit. Denver's tight end situation with Jake Butt. Uh, Jake Barwin in, in Dallas. What about Ravens? Any any of the right Hayden Hurst or yeah. uh, or Mark Andrews? Could could they squeeze? Or what about, you know what? Uh, what about Gerald Everett? Like second year with the Rams, like you add him in there, maybe he gets a couple of extra touchdowns that he didn't have last season. A couple extra targets. For me. I still think he's a year away. Okay. I, don't I, I, even, think. I don't even know if for me if he'll ever ever really happen. Damn. I don't, I don't know if that if that's <laughs> kind of what they do. Savage. Is there anybody you want to add, James, into yours? Because we've yeah, Gerald Everett. Yours. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. If huh? Delaney Walker happens to get hurt, Johnny Smith would be super uh, relevant. I I feel like. Where's Gerald Everett in this? <laughs> Everett, Everett. Uh, okay, yeah. Is there everybody else? Uh, anybody else want to add anything or no? Oh, keep a keep a side eye on uh, Ed Dixon in Seattle. I think. 
uh, there's uh, some targets going around that are uh, up for grabs. He'll be, blo- Graham, he'll be blocking. He'll be blocking so that Nick Van Eck can get the catches. Oh, okay. Second round pick for Gerald Everett. Pick 12, second round. Like, when are they going to start using this guy? Well, what did he finish last year in the top, in, in, in tight end? Well, he didn't play one, two, three, four. He didn't play four games. So that doesn't help. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. He finished number 42. Ooh. <laughs> for tight end, does not do good. No, I see. I, I yeah. finished ahead of Ricky Seals Jones. Even in a tight end premium. Ricky Seals like, Jones you guys have Ricky, Ricky Seals Jones at number 45, and now all of a sudden he's in the top, <laughs> top 20. I mean, because um, he's, a, for me, I'm not. I only put him up there because of the situation mostly. He's a former wide receiver. Like, legit. Le- legit. And a quarterback who, if it's Sam Bradford, will use the tight end in those shorter passes. And if it's the rookie, he will probably do the same thing. Mm-hmm. He's a tight end. Ricky Seals Jones played 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 games uh, last season. And he had five. He averaged five points a game. That's because two weeks he had 21 and 17. Other than that, he did nothing. I agree. Uh, okay. You guys ready to crack one? Yeah, let's crack it. Crack it.